Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. We have another installment of the Ultimate Lunchbox, but this time it's for all of you lovelies who don't like to cook or maybe don't have time to cook. This is not my favorite method of preparing food for a couple reasons. Mainly, I mean, I like to cook and I like to control how my food tastes. Um, but number one, it's more expensive. Number two, it's more expensive point-wise. Uh, and number three, you're limited to what a company decided to make. So there's a lot less freedom in what you get to eat. However, this can be super helpful in a pinch. Sometimes you really don't have time. Say, you know, you have a couple busy days in your week. You need something that you can throw together really quickly or even make a dinner out of this. Say your kids got soccer practice till six. You want to get home and throw something together quickly instead of going out to eat. These will all work for that. Um, as with everything, this is customizable. These are just ideas for you. Maybe things you haven't thought of. My first tip is to have your phone and your Weight Watchers app open, ready to peruse the aisles of your grocery store and just scan those barcodes, baby. There are things I thought I was going to use that scanned way too high in points so I said never mind and there are things that I didn't think about and after scanning and finding they're a little bit lower in points said oh maybe I'll try that so do that in your grocery store we're all gonna have different things I tried to pick stuff that I know most grocery stores will have so this is gonna be five different recipes or not recipes we're not cooking anything five different ideas for your lunches, uh, I recommend having a vegetable at every lunch, and if you can, having the fruit at lunch will also be really helpful. Also, if while you are making your food the night before, create the meal in your app. I am gonna show you right here how to create it. You're gonna go to my food, you're gonna go over to meals and hit create. You're gonna add all the items in that meal. So if you really like it, you can go to it and click that meal and it will add it to your diary for that day, all the things you had. I hope you give that a try. It also cuts down um, the next day. You don't have to worry about, oh crap, now I don't have barcodes with me or what? how much of that was in this. You already know, it's already put together for you. And next week when you wanna make it again, you're good to go. So the first idea I have, uh, I saw these turkey meatballs at my grocery store. And these are in the meat area, but with all the other like pre-cooked meats, like they have like the, the turkey and gravy and all, all the things. So I saw these, so hopefully you can find these as well. They're okay on points. It's about two points per meatball. The serving size is three meatballs and that is six points. Uh, again, with having pre-packaged food, you're gonna lose a little bit of that freedom. I can make a meatball for way less than two points per meatball. I'm not taking the time to do that, so I kind of, you know, this, this is what I got. So, two points for meatball. Again, that is only 11 grams of protein. So, I would not recommend really cutting down past three meatballs because then you're going to be pretty darn low on your protein. But I'll do it in a pinch, especially if you pair it with a protein pasta or something like that. I digress. Let's go ahead and get into these KFC bowls. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's normally where you like air fry chicken strips and put that on top of mashed potatoes, corn with gravy. Uh, you can put cheese on it. I didn't add cheese to mine. I don't need the extra points uh, and I just don't eat a ton of cheese. So um, if you have points wiggle room, feel free to do that. This is gonna be a 12 point meal. Yeah, because these mashed potatoes are five points. Scan all your stuff, see if you can find one that's less. I could not find one less than five points for half a cup of mashed potatoes. So this is five points. This will be six points. And then I'm gonna add, for me, corn is not zero points, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it because I like corn. And I like the texture it gives to this dish whenever I make it with the chicken. So I'm gonna add one point worth of corn and then zero point worths of this turkey gravy. I find this where I can find like the packages of gravy. Uh, this is great and it's already made. You just pour it out, it keeps in the fridge. Uh, if you are a gluten-free person, this is gluten-free, which is awesome. If you don't like to cook, or honestly, even if you do, I always recommend having some cans of vegetables in your pantry that you know you like, and also a few bags of steamable vegetables that you like, so that no matter what's going on, you know you can have vegetables in your meal quickly. Sometimes stuff happens and maybe you planned on roasting green beans and you didn't get to it. You can still have a vegetable within like three minutes and you're good to go. So my favorite 
steamable vegetable is broccoli. I love a bunch of other stuff in the air fryer in the oven. Don't love a lot of other steamed vegetables. And then my favorite canned vegetable is green beans. It's the only one I don't mind that mushy texture. I don't like the mushy texture on any of the other vegetables. So I always have frozen broccoli and canned green beans in my house. So you'll see me using those, but use whatever you love. Other things that I think is really helpful to have, um, number one, just like washed, ready to go fruits. If you like grapes, strawberries, melon already cut up, whatever you like. But a real time saver can also be these un, um, unsweetened apple sauces that are already portioned out and ready to go. I like the ones with cinnamon. If it doesn't have cinnamon, don't give it to me, okay? And then things like yogurt are also a great option to have, especially if you know you are having one of the meals where it is a little bit lighter on your protein. Protein helps keep you full. Protein helps with your muscles. Protein is glorious for you. So make sure you're getting enough of it in. Let's get started on these bowls. So I have cooked my mashed potatoes only a couple minutes. I did it I peeled it back and cooked it for two and a half minutes and then stirred it. I just wanted to be able to stir it to incorporate the water. If you've ever had those before, the pre-made mashed potatoes, you know they separate and it's really hard to incorporate it if you don't warm it up a little bit. But we don't need to warm it up according to the package because we're gonna be warming it up again when we're actually eating it. So just enough to be able to stir it up. I also cooked my frozen broccoli just according to the package and have that just chilling out over there. I'm not gonna cook the rice. I'm just gonna make sure to break it up really well. We don't need it hot because we're going to be adding it for later. So just break it up really well before you portion it out. Because I already had to buy these and we don't want them to go bad. Number one, freeze whatever you don't use. But number two, you can have it in multiple different ways. Feel free to have them in pasta or on a meatball sub or insert random idea. Go for it. Have it that way. Um, I found these vegetable pasta. So this is a great way. These have eight grams of protein. So if you add this to that, you're getting a lot more protein buck, a lot more protein bang for your buck. So I like that. I have had this. I eat this with chicken sausage from time to time. I like it. I enjoy it. Um, and again, I will add a vegetable with this. You'll see all of those here in a minute. I'm just going to run through our ideas. The next idea is going to be a taco power bowl. Now I saw this on Felicia Keithley's Instagram page where she added shredded lettuce, pre-cooked chicken. This is just my store brand. I bought the smallest amount possible because guys, I would never buy this if I wasn't doing this for you. Uh, Cause I would rather just make my own blackened chicken strips for way, way cheaper that I keep in the freezer. But for you, I bought this. We're also gonna add black beans and this is no cook baby. So we're adding Spanish rice. She did white rice that she added taco seasoning to. So that is an option as well. I didn't have white rice that was like this and I couldn't find like a plain white rice. So I thought why well, do the work of mixing taco seasoning when I could just buy Spanish rice. So that's what we're using. I could not find, she did like a Taco Bell avocado ranch. Couldn't find it anywhere. That's okay because I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use instead. So my power combo are gonna be these two. This was found in like the taco aisle at Walmart. And I really like it. It does add like an easy cheesiness. You know, most of these, you know, come in jars. You have to scrape out, microwave it like in little bowls, stir it cause like all the outside is blistered and disgusting and burnt. I don't do that with this. I just put it on cold. If it goes on hot food and you mix it in, uh, it warms up by itself. So I'm lazy, I guess. This is what I like to use. Uh, it's something I recently found. So uh, it is one point for one tablespoon. And I think that's highly, highly worth it. And my beloved, this is my second, my second one. I'm right here. So like in five months, I have gone through almost two of these because I love it. Anytime I'm having any kind of taco, anything, this gets put on it. If I'm having, if I'm having a breakfast taco, oh heck yeah. Lots of this gets put on it. And then you'll see two more options after I make these. I'm gonna make these and eat these before I film the other two options because I don't wanna waste food. So uh, stay tuned and you'll see two more options here in a minute. We're gonna start with our first option. That is our meatballs, mashed potatoes, our gravy and our corn with our broccoli. I'm gonna move that out of the way. I need three meatballs. 
I, again, I would do this in assembly line where you create multiple at the same time. I wanted to put some of these meatballs, like cut them up and do them on light English muffins, but my grocery store is out of English muffins. They're out of a lot of stuff, so, you know, fun times. I'm gonna cut these up just because I think it'll be easier to eat. I want a little bit of turkey meatball with each bite of my mashed potato goodness. Now, if you have 40 points or something and you wanna add more meatballs or more potatoes, go ahead. So I'm gonna first start off with my mashed potatoes. I put half a cup in my tracker, so I'm making sure I measure that out. And these potatoes are really good. I had a little taste test. These are the Simply Potatoes, sour cream, and chive. Just in case you're interested. I'm just gonna smush it along the bottom there. And again, do all your mashed potatoes at the same time. Then I'm gonna add my turkey. And I'm not cooking this at all from the packaging because it's going to cook on the day that we eat it. I have my frozen corn here. Corn is not a zero point food for me, so I'm only going to add a fourth of a cup. If this is a zero point food, feel free to bulk up this meal with more of the corn. This is an eighth of a cup, so I'm going to add two of these. And I, this is straight from frozen. It will defrost overnight in the fridge. So no worries about that. I have my steamed broccoli. I'm gonna give it a little drain because I don't like all the extra juices. And I wanna make sure to get my point back. So I'm gonna make sure to have a cup in there. Darn it, I bought the big ones. I hate it when I do that. I like the little bitty ones. These are like the big honking ones. So make sure to zhuzh up your broccoli however you like it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of, I can't believe it's not butter spray, salt and pepper. That's normally how I eat steamed broccoli. Add some salt. And I like a lot of pepper. The last ingredient is this turkey gravy. I'm only adding an eighth of a cup because I only wanna count it for one point because this is 12 points plus one back for the broccoli. That's a pretty high lunch for me. So I'm cutting down on this gravy. I would definitely add a little bit more if you have more points to play with. Ooh, I don't know, that's pretty good. All right, I'm not gonna put the lid on until my broccoli has cooled completely. That is my first lunch, 12 points plus a point back. And there's a lot of hearty deliciousness. You won't be missing on flavor whatsoever. Now we are ready for our veggie pasta. I cooked this according to the packaging. It's been sitting out a few minutes. It's still pretty hot. And this bag is gonna make two lunches. So I'm gonna make sure the pasta is all, there's sauce in there. I'm gonna make sure it's stirred through so that. Okay, and I have three meatballs and I've just cut them up into bite-sized pieces. If you're working with a plastic fork at work, the last thing you want is to be breaking your fork trying to cut up a meatball. And then one tablespoon of Parmesan is no point. So I'm gonna sprinkle that on there. If you'd like to top with more marinara, feel free. I'm not going to, because I like the way this pasta tastes. I've had it several times already. And then with this, I wanna pair it with at least a cup of vegetables. And then I'll probably pair it with my little applesauce here too, making sure that when I package this to put this on top so that I know they go together and I don't forget anything. Because first thing in the morning, no one's thinking properly. Again, feel free to change up your veggies. I'm just doing what's quick and easy. That one bag made three different lunches. So there's about three cups worth in that bag. All right, that was two days worth of lunches that cooked in four minutes. So basically the four minutes 
well, I guess nine minutes total because you have to cook the broccoli and the pasta both separately. So in nine minutes while you're uh, doing the dishes from the night before, you can have lunch for the next day already prepped. Again, I'm gonna wait for these to completely cool down before I put the lid on and put them in my fridge. Last but not least, we have our Taco Bell Power Bowls. I think that there's something just perfection when you have shredded lettuce in anything taco. So this is what I'm choosing to use. Feel free to use any kind of green that you like. Spinach, arugula, you know, spring mix, kale. You know, you do you, boo. Uh, I'm going with this because it's nostalgic and it's classic and uh, this is gonna taste real good. I have two different types of containers here. I think something like this is gonna work best with this because I can keep my lettuce separate. Um, and don't have to worry about it getting soggy. However, if you only have the one type, I'm gonna do it in here too, just to show you how I would do it if I only had one of these. Now again, these are amounts that work for me because of me scanning and how much points I have. So um, I'm only doing a third cup of things. You can add more if you want, uh, or like if beans are a zero point food, add more beans. If corn is a zero point food, add corn in here. I didn't put the corn in here because I'd rather have my tortilla strips. I'm going to start off with two cups of lettuce. That is my base. So I'm going to get two points back for this, which is super exciting. So my lettuce goes in the big area and then I'm going to put all my toppings on the other two. For this one, I'm actually going to put my lettuce in a Ziploc bag. Because I want two cups, I'm choosing a quart size bag just so I know it'll fit. And I'm also going to fold up a paper towel and put it in there as well so it can catch any kind of moisture that is building up in my bag. Air out. All right, that's my lettuce for this one. And I got the one ahead and got the big one because y'all, I'm gonna be eating this all week long. I'm excited. So next I'm gonna add my Spanish rice. I bought the pre-mixed one. Obviously we're not cooking anything. So I'm doing a third of a cup of this as well as black beans. So I'm gonna put that over there. Have drained and rinsed a can of black beans. Again, that's a third of a cup. Now for my chicken, this chicken is six ounces. I really want to make sure I have at least three ounces of chicken. So I'm going to uh, make this, we'll make two different lunches. You can buy a much bigger one uh, and, you know, make sure it makes more meals. Like I said, uh, this isn't something I'll be repurchasing or keeping on hand. Feel free to cut this up into smaller bite-sized pieces. And then don't be too stressed out about it. Your body doesn't freak out if it doesn't have the exact amount of nutrients per day. It's more of a week-long process. So this is gonna be six ounces of meat that I'm gonna eat over two days. So it doesn't really matter if I have perfectly three ounces one day, perfectly three ounces the next day. It'll work itself out in the wash in the end. Now is the best part of this. Number one, you can add actual cheese if you want. I am going to add a tablespoon of the queso and I'm gonna do that by adding it to this portion of my bowl instead of doing anything in this portion. I'm actually going to, just, just like we did on that one, just kind of have some something there to absorb moisture. So all of my sauces are gonna go on this side. It says a tablespoon is one point. Ah, started uh, squirting out on me. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I'm just gonna do it on both. You can weigh it out if you wanna be precise. And I'm just gonna eyeball this as well. Whoa, got a little carried away. All right, I'm a happy girl. 
If you want to add salsa, I would add it to your chicken side. I mean, add just a little bit. You can add it in a little ramekin if you'd like. I'm gonna mix it all up together anyway, so. Now I'm gonna put in a little sandwich bag my strips so they don't get soggy in here. I have this little snack bag. If you don't have these strips, just crush up some tortilla chips. But there is something just really amazing about the ones that are the Southwest flavor. Oh, so good. Now, because I have my towel here, I can add these here it's for easy package. That's why I like this one better because everything's all in here minus the sour cream. Um, or this one, it's going to be kind of layers and that's okay too. Save yourself some money. So the last thing I need to worry about is my sour cream. But that's not going to go in here. Actually, yeah, it is. Why not? Why not? I'm not warming any of this up. I'm eating it all cold, so. There we have it. If you think you might want more salsa or sour cream, feel free to either add it here or add it. If you're not sure if you want it, uh, you can take it in a little ramekin, like to-go ramekin, just in case. All right, so that is six points plus two back. That's a lot. Oh, this whole thing is full of food. It's a lot of food. So I take just like that. So that would be what you take. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to eat this one right now for dinner. So, you know, it's not really going to be worried about it. There we go. All of these total took about 20 minutes and I could have made several of each. But you know, I don't want to go bad. That took no time at all. A quick note about those meatballs. I could have made four different lunches using three meatballs each. So you could do two of the pasta, two of the mashed potatoes, and then have some of the mashed potatoes for dinner. Uh, they're really good. So, so basically make two of these, two of these, and then you're golden for the week. Oh, look at all this. This is what you don't see when I'm filming. Ooh, I have to go clean up now. And then the chicken would have made two or two batches worth with the six ounces that I bought. However, the lettuce, there's a lot more there. There's a lot more rice. There's a lot more beans. So if I had bought a bigger amount of chicken, I could have made a lot more salads. And um, I'll probably just add my own chicken here in the future and eat a lot more salads. Next time you see me, it'll be a couple days later once all this deliciousness is gone and uh, out of my fridge. And I can move on to other options. So stay tuned. Hey y'all, well, I was gonna say welcome back, but I'm the only one that came back. You've already been here. So I'm glad to be back. Uh, it's time for a couple new recipes for lunch. Uh, so far, my favorite actually, after eating it, everything for the last few days was the meatballs with the mashed potatoes and the gravy. I was actually really surprised how much more I liked that um, than the other ones. I thought the taco salad was gonna be my favorite, but it was like, it's fine. To taco salad, what's not to love? But the meatball with the mashed potatoes? Even my husband had it and he was a little upset when it was all gone and he didn't have any more to take to work. So I guess that's gonna actually be on a rotation for things because I can throw it together for him on when we don't have leftovers, he still needs something to take to work. Money saving tip, don't go out to eat all the time. It costs a lot of money. Now let's get on to the next two items. The first one. It's almost fall time and here where I live in Texas, it's been in the 80s degrees heat outside and um, that's about as fall as I'm gonna get for a while. So I'm gonna capitalize on that. I'm gonna eat some soup because some of y'all are weird about eating soup when it's not cold outside, but, but then your food's hot every day. So that confuses me. If your food's always hot, why does it matter if you have hot soup? 
but I digress. I digress. So I am sure you have seen these progressive light soups. Maybe you've forgotten about them. I actually forgot about them. Uh, and I didn't remember them until I was doing a little bit of research for this video. So there's several different kinds. I got these two. Please, please do not eat a can of soup for lunch. And that's it. Girl, 170 calories, 150 calories. That is not lunch. That is a snack. Okay. You're going to be so hungry by the time you get off work that you're going to binge eat all the things before you even get dinner cooked. Don't do it to yourself. So I am a fan of soup with other stuff. So I'm going to have one can of soup will be two days worth because it'll be a cup per serving. So this will be two days worth. And let's see, it is two points for a cup. So if I wanted to eat this whole can plus something else, it would be four points plus whatever I have. I'm gonna pair mine with a salad because I'm a classic gal. I like some soup and salad combos. So this is one of the soups. The other soup is, ooh, Santa Fe chicken, heck yeah. This one is one point for a cup or two or three points for the entire can. I'm not the kind of person who loves soup so much that I want to eat an entire can by myself. That's why I am breaking this up into two different meals. We are different people. You do what sounds good to you. If you love soup, have the whole can. But please, please add something to your soup. Okay. With soup, I normally like to add a crunchy element that I can just sop up all the yummy juices. And so I'm going to add some crisp and light crackers to my soup. Um, actually, you know, to the side, I'll like dip and then eat. You know how to eat soup. It's fine. I'll show you these crackers. I just actually ripped one open. Um, there might be evidence of foul play here. Uh, this, But they're about that size. Uh, I, I ripped it in half and tried it. It's an element to dip. Like, there's not a lot of flavor. The flavor's from the juice of the soup, the broth, all that stuff. Dip it into the broth and eat it. You got a little crisp, you got a little carbs. With that, because still not enough. That's, that's... 60 calories for three of them. I am only gonna do two. They're a good size cracker. Break them in half, that gives you four good size crackers. That's plenty for me and my needs and my one cup of soup. Um, and that's one point for the two. If I did the three slices, like they say, it is two points, but you can do four of them for... I always have to sneeze now. But you can do four for two points. So if you really love a cracker and you're having the whole can of soup, go ahead and add an extra two crackers for a point, no big deal. So I'm sure you have known these salads really well. Any kind of salad kit will do. My personal favorite is this Buffalo Ranch chop salad kit. I have the Dill Ranch actually already prepped that, <clears throat> opened that bag yesterday. This salad says it's four servings, but I'm gonna turn it into three servings. So when you scan the package, make sure your package is a one and a third cup and that will give you the right points for it. This one scanned for five points for that. And I'm gonna get a point back for the vegetables. Here's the thing about this meal in general. We're really lacking our protein. We want protein because you know, sexy muscles, yes. Fullness, yes. Nina, say more. Sexy muscles and fullness. That's all you need to know. So we only have three grams of protein in this It'll be four once you add the little bit more. Not a lot. And our little crackers, two. So plus, so now we're at five grams of protein plus whatever our soup is. This is the Italian meatball. If I have a cup, it's three. So eight grams of protein so far. This one's four. So eight to nine grams of protein with how it sits. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but add some chicken, okay? I love y'all so much, I went and bought another packet, but I bought a different brand because I went to Kroger, so I'm gonna try this out. If you don't want to do these kind of ready-made grilled, you can also use deli meat. I tried this on the dill pickle salad. It was delicious. 
and uh, I'm probably gonna keep it in the house. I don't really love eating sandwiches. I just, I just don't. So I'd rather have that deli meat on a salad where I can just rip it really quickly and throw it on and it just sprinkles in really nicely because it's so thinly shaved. And I like that. I like that in the meat. But when I add three ounces of this, this one, it was actually on sale. Just why I bought it. I think this is nine. So this is three servings worth and each serving is 20 grams of protein. So now you have almost 30 grams of protein by simply adding some chicken. You can add it into your soup. You can add it into your salad. You can add it into both, however you want to get it in. But please get in some extra protein. I'm not really sure if I need to show you how to package this up because you literally, you pour your soup in a container. That's not going to leak. Okay. And then you package up your salad. This is my salad that I packaged up yesterday from the dill pickle. I added some of the shredded lettuce from our taco bowls because I had a little bit left. I have a little bit more left, but we're gonna use that in the next recipe. Um, so I just added a little more lettuce because it wasn't a ton of lettuce compared to how much of this they give you. Now what I like to do, you can buy a reusable one of these or you can wash this, no big deal. Um, but I like to have three containers out for my dressing. So as I'm pouring out my dressing, I can make sure they're even amounts that go with each. Not because I'm worried about spreading out my points, but because I don't want a giant amount of lettuce that doesn't have enough salad dressing, okay? And I also do the same thing with my crumbles. So I just have my two different ones in there. I can add my chicken into a bag and put it in here as well, as well as my crackers. So that's how I would portion out this. A little side note on these salad bags. They are a great way to kind of introduce your palate to new different kinds of greens. So this one in particular, it has romaine, lettuce, different kinds of cabbage. It has raw broccoli, which I don't like, y'all. It has green onions, carrots. And then I have another one. I got like a bourbon, apple, some kind of bourbon glazed one as well. And it has other kinds of greens. So I do not like raw broccoli. This is a great way for me to get my palate kind of introduced to raw broccoli. And then over time, maybe it'll be less bitter. It'll be more palatable for me. That's the hope. Um, I also don't like raw cabbage. So the fact that I can eat these is a testament that it's already working a little bit. But what I do like to do is put my dressing on my greens like 20 minutes before I'm gonna eat it and let it kind of marinate in the dressing. And it just kind of helps with some of the flavors. You know, it takes on a lot more flavor of the dressing versus like, that's some raw broccoli. So that's what I like to do. I hope that's helpful. Really, if you've learned anything today, I hope it's that soup is not enough calories for your lunch and um, get that protein in, girl. Those are, the, those are the lessons of the day. We're moving on to our second option, which I'm about to have for lunch right now. I just got back from the gym. I'm hungry. I am ready to go. Got a little aggressive. This girl's hangry. So our next option is tostadas. So scan some of the options you have in your grocery store. I had some that scanned for more points, some that scanned for less points. I obviously picked the one that was less points. These are 120 calories for two of them. If I have two, it's four points. However, if I have three, it's five points. So that's like a buy two, get one half off sale. I'm here for it. So I'm gonna have three of these bad boys. So I would of course package these in sandwich Ziploc bags or quart size bags, whatever you can fit three of these in and keep them from going stale because you don't want them with the rest of your stuff. To my delicious tostada, I'm going to smear on some refried beans. So I'm going to pack half a cup of beans. That is two points for me because beans are not a zero point food for me. So, so far we're at seven points. I don't eat cheese all the time, but when I do, it's probably Mexican food. So. Uh, once I get through my lower fat options, I'm actually just going to go back to regular fat. Uh, I'm working out and I can have the extra calories because I have the extra points now. I was 21 points a day and not using those to the best of my ability. And now that I get more with my workouts and I get a couple bit more because I took pasta out, uh, I'm just going to go back to full fat because that's what I want to use after I gain 
after I lose the weight, that's what I want to use. I think it tastes better. It's more satisfying. It's more satiating for my hunger levels. So I'm going to go back to full fat. For now, I have this. And I'm going to do a fourth of a cup total, which is three points. I'm going to be adding my chopped up chicken, like you, please. Uh, if you, I'm sure there's all sorts of different kinds of fajita meat if you want to do. Uh, you could do beef. You can do whatever you want. This is a zero point option for me. So that's why I'm picking the chicken. And I honestly just like the chicken better than the like pre-made beef fajitas. There's so much like connective tissue and stuff in these pre-made meats that I don't really love them or pick them uh, when I have the option to make it myself. But it's good to have a quick option when you need it. I have a little bit more of my shredded lettuce. That could have been bad. Good thing I got cat-like reflexes. I'm going to use my shredded lettuce to top it off. And I mean, if you know, you know, it's hot sauce. I also have some roja. This is also really good if this is like on the, you know, international aisle of, of Walmart. So I'm gonna make a portion of tostadas for me to eat right now. And I'm also gonna package some to show you how I package this up because you know it's a little more than putting salad in a container. First, what I'm gonna do is just microwave my beans for a little bit. You see how separated the beans are from the liquid. I want all of that goodness because you don't want like oh super dense beans. Maybe be a little more graceful with your ploppage than me. I'm just gonna mash it down with a fork and microwave this. I'm only microwaving this long enough for these juices to, ah. Well, you know what? Don't even have to microwave it. We're just gonna smush it with a fork until it's all combined. I know it's an extra dirty bowl, but you want it all incorporated. So that was it for our beans. The beans are done. I have some of my tostadas already in a sandwich bag. Be very careful with these. Make sure you're putting them on top nice and gently so they're not all broken up. I did want to show you the top of your bag will probably resemble something like this where they're all broken up. Don't throw these away. These make great um, crumblies for salads and things like that. Or if you're doing that Santa Fe soup, you could always do one of these crushed up on top. It's a great flavor, so why not enjoy it in multiple ways? I'm also gonna work with my chicken. I only want to have to work with this once. So it's not quite as small as I'd like it. So I'm going to cut it all up on one night. So I already have my cutting board and my knife, it's already dirty. So just use it all the same night. I've never had this Purdue brand, so let me taste like carved chicken. The other kind was would probably have been better with the uh, taco. The H-E-B one I bought, it was more of a fajita style. So I'd recommend doing that for the tacos, but I think this will still actually be really good. Right now I'm questioning why I didn't get my bigger knife out. My dog is right underneath my feet, y'all. He can smell it. He's praying I drop something. I'm gonna show you how I would package so I know I need a half cup of beans. I've already smashed them to get all the juices back in. Now when I eat these at work where all I have is a microwave, what I'm gonna do is heat up these beans, the cheese and the chicken, and then spoon it onto my tostada that I haven't put any heat on. I'm just not sure how that would do in the microwave. It might get like kind of rubbery. I'm not a fan of that. So I wanna make sure to use I wanna make sure to use a third of this chicken so I'm getting all my 20 grams of protein. And this is for three of them. So it looks like a lot, but you're, you're definitely gonna want all of it. And then when I microwave this, I want the cheese to be melty all over that chicken. So that's why I'm putting my cheese on top. And then as always, I put just a, a half of a paper towel in my bag for my lettuce. I wanna make sure to use a cup of lettuce so I get that point back. And again, it's spread out over three of them, so it's not gonna to be too lettuce-y. I'm just going to take some of this. You can also do like regular salsa if you'd like. So 
So I'll put that in there to close it. And when I'm ready to eat this, I'll take my salsa and my lettuce out, microwave this, spoon it over my tostadas, top it with my lettuce and my salsa. So for three of these, it's eight points, plus you get a point back. So that's a seven point lunch and you had a delicious Mexican feast. Now, if you are not confined to using a microwave at work and say you're like me and you work from home, I'm going to eat these now, but I'm gonna do these suckers in the air fryer. I'm gonna do the same thing though. You could still have them packaged up like this if you'd like, if it just makes it easier for you, or you can just have all your beans in a container all your chicken already prepped, where everything's in its own individual container, and you just add it as you go. So I just wanna get about a third of this onto each one. Be careful with your little tostada babies. You don't want them to be all cracked and crumbly before you even make it into your mouth. Supporting it with your hand could be a good option instead of that hard cutting board. Oh no. Oh no. It's okay. That was a what not to do. So now I need a third of my meat. I'm going to take this other third and put it in a bowl so that when I eat my soup and my salad, I already have it ready to go as well. See, so it looks like a lot of food when you're packaging it up, but when you have it on all three, it's really spread out nicely. Not one of them feels overly filled, but it also doesn't feel underfilled. I don't want to use a fourth of a cup, so I'm just going to make sure to spread the love here. All right, this is how I am going to air fry them. I'm going to do my broken one first, pop it in here. I'm hoping that cheese just like, you know, puts it back together for me magically in the air fryer. I'm too lazy to give it more room than that because I don't want to have to do two batches. So we're going to do one batch for about four minutes on 380 and check it out. So that only took three minutes. I want to top it with my remaining lettuce. And my sauce. I'm making pickled red onion tonight for our taco dinner and I will definitely be adding pickled red onions to this the next time I eat it. I just don't have them made yet but this could also use a little bit more acid so if you have it let me look see if I have a lime. I do. So I'm going to add a wedge of this to my prepared container as well. I like to roll it just to break up the juices. So you can pack hedge half a lime with for your other one, some for this one. I'm gonna try one with the lime juice and one without and let you know if it's worth it because I do think this needs some acid. If you have leftover sauteed vegetables like bell pepper and onion, adding that. If you love jalapeno, add that. If you want sour cream, add that. It's a vessel uh, for you to do as you will. I forgot which one I added the lime to. All right, so I'm gonna try the one with the lime and I'm gonna try one without lime. Mm-hmm. Plus, that is a broken one. That's really good.
It's the only time for me. So I'm gonna add it to the rest of mine. Remember, just because we're eating healthy doesn't mean we need it to be boring. So I do understand that the pickled red onion is an extra step, but it will be delicious. I'm gonna leave the link below of the one I'm gonna follow. There's a great channel, it's called Views on the Road. I'm going to share a video here in a little bit with my taco night that I'm making tonight. But I wanted to go ahead and give you how she makes it because that's who I'm following. Um, just in case you want to do it. It takes like 20 minutes of marinating your onions and some and some juices. Like, it's not that hard. So maybe you can do that. And that, if that's your only cooking, maybe you don't mind. If not, just skip it and do the lime because uh, it does need a, just a little bit of something. Acid is a really great friend. Salt's a really great friend. When we're not adding a bunch of fat to stuff, we still want stuff to taste good. So it's gonna be a really good flavor booster for you. The true, uh, that is also true with those soups. So if you have that Santa Fe soup, take a lime with you and then when you cook it, add a little bit of juice to it. It's gonna really brighten it up and make it more flavorful, make it more fresh. If you love cilantro, chop up some cilantro. So take a lime and some cilantro, add it to the canned soup. Your efforts were this much and you get a much more better flavor payoff. Hey, I was just wrapping this video up and it brought to my attention the fact that that Taco Bell Power Bowl that I had, I think one thing, one reason why it wasn't my favorite of all of them is because it was lacking that freshness. So again, adding cilantro, I'm definitely going to add the lime next time. I don't love cilantro. I think it tastes like soap. I can do small amounts, not large amounts, but adding more fresh elements, I think would really help pep up that Power Bowl. So if you try it, get a couple of limes, slice them up, add it to your Power Bowl. Just wanted to make that little adjustment here before I forgot because I'm forgetful. So, all right, back to what I was saying. So I hope this is a super helpful video for you. I'm excited to eat my tostadas. And also now I have stuff prepared in my fridge for me to eat later in the week. And that's good because I've been at the gym until lunchtime and then I get home and I'm hungry. So with that spirit in mind, I'm gonna go eat. Bye guys, I'll see you next time.